There is no end to the long ordeal of missing persons' families in Pakistan. They disappear without a trace. Their families have been hoping against hope since 2001, when enforced abductions began in the country. According to relatives of the missing persons, the issue is directly linked with the US-led so-called global war on terror. Since 9-11 attacks, hundreds of Pakistanis have been disappeared and their families have accused the country's security agencies for being behind it. According to figures compiled by victim families, close to 400 people are still missing. In an effort to seek the recovery of their loved ones, the families of missing persons have staged a sit-in outside the parliament. Amna Janjua, whose husband has gone missing since July 2005, is spearheading the movement for the early recovery of disappeared persons. She says Pakistani security agencies have picked up people at the behest of the U.S. in the name of fighting militancy. Everyone is celebrating Eid with their loved ones. President is celebrating Eid with his children. Prime Minister is celebrating Eid with his family. Don't we have this right? Why my children are suffering without their father for last six years? We don't want to spend this Eid without my husband, without the uh, sons and daughters of this aggrieved nation. Security authorities have always denied the custody of missing persons. The issue has also been taken up by the country's highest court, which has recently formed a judicial commission to trace the missing persons. The head of the commission visited the protest camp set up by victim families and sought time to recover the disappeared persons. We are trying our level best to trace out these missing persons. Our collective effort to trace out these missing persons. Our collective effort to trace out these missing persons. I can assure you, all those who are behind these abductions will be brought to the court of law. After firm assurances, families of the missing persons have called off their protest. Kamran Yusuf, Press TV, Islamabad. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is November 2nd, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part three, the final part for today. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also on YouTube, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. That's ddarko2012. Okay. Um, I just posted a poll here. If given the choice, would you abandon your human body and convert into a cyborg-like machine? And uh, so far, uh, some other people have gone in there and voted. Um, so far, 75% say no, they will not. But there is one person who said that they would. So, like I said, it's not very shocking to me that there would be people that would want to do that. Um, okay, I have a lot of news to get to. Um, so I'm just going to get in there and cover it. Uh, interesting news, too. UN report offers smoking gun proof of NATO and U.S. lies about Libya. Now, this is just so typical, okay? Here is a type of smoking gun proof that NATO and the U.S. has op been operating through a smokescreen of lies as well as intimidation. Please read the following January 4, 2011, that's right before they went in there and invaded Libya, report of the 16th session of the United Nations General Assembly, uh, Human Rights Council Universal Periodic Review. And it goes in there and it says, before NATO and the U.S. started bombing Libya for the humanitarian mission, the United Nations or global government was preparing to bestow an award on Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, the brutal dictator, and the Libyan Gemma Haria for its achievements in the area of human rights. That's right, the same man, uh, Mr. Gaddafi, that NATO and the U.S. have been telling us for months is a brutal dictator. Okay, that's it's so like I said, I read this for the first time, so, you know, I was just using what I kept hearing, which is that. Uh, was set to be given an award for his human rights record in Libya. How strange it is that the United Nations was set to bestow a human rights award on a brutal dictator at the end of March. It says in a footnote of that report, there's a list of countries that praise uh, Gaddafi and the Libyan uh, Gemma Haria, state of the masses, in support of the General Assembly Human Rights Council decision to bestow this award upon Gaddafi. And it goes on there, and it says that... Um, some of these countries were Denmark, China, Italy, the Netherlands, uh, Slovenia, the Russian Federation, Spain, Sweden, Norway, Germany, Australia. You can go on there, Kazakhstan, Latvia, and uh, more countries. So I'm going to keep moving there. It just goes to show you what they were really after, which was the contracts for the gold. Uh, I'm sorry, for the oil. They want a cheap uh, oil that's not going to go towards the masses anymore. It's going to go in the pockets of big companies. And... Um, 
that's why they have their frontmen uh, that I'll get to here coming up, uh, which is who? The Libya's new prime minister is a low-key technocrat uh, in all their stuff as well. So uh, moving on here, we have German firm Fires model for praising the Gaddafi. She's not the first person to be um, uh, basically publicly lashed for uh, praising Gaddafi. It says a German company has canceled a major advertising contract ooh, with an Italian-American model after she described her passionate relationship with Muammar Gaddafi's son and praised his family. She said that I didn't have any contact with him uh, since the uprising broke out, but our relationship was one of passion, talking about her son, Gaddafi's son. And um, it goes on and says, quote, the Gaddafi family is not as they are being depicted. They are normal people. Moving on, Libya's new prime minister is a low-key technocrat. This is the this is the term that I keep trying to remember when I talk about these um, uh, Zygmunt Brzezinski's and, and Kissinger's and, and people that go around uh, pushing these global um, agendas that they sit down and close doors and round tables and, uh, and, and divvy up and, and, and basically plan your future that you have nothing to do with, no say at all. And they call that democracy. Now they want to boost that into a global democracy, which to me sounds pretty scary because if it's not democracy to begin with, what are you going to get if it's going to go global? says here a low-key technocrat and um and then we move here it says libya elects a little known scientist so he's a technocrat a scientist as a new prime minister and he says with vast oil and gas reserves and relatively small population libya has the potential to become a prosperous but the the potential to become a prosperous nation now i'm not going to go into that but prosperous nation for who they were the most in they were the most advanced country in africa that is a fact so how more prosperous can the people have been when they had apartments, got money for getting married? And like I said, I went through all the things that they had. So how are they going to become more prosperous? Have you ever seen when Gaddafi was driving down the street? Just, you know, driving down the street. Not a, not a big flotilla armada of security to protect uh, a lying, thieving bastard like the U.S., U.K. presidents and all them. No, not that. They have, I mean, not like a big thing motorcade he had a few cars around him and everybody that was he was driving through in the middle of the day and stuff like that were cheering for him and you look at the streets and you see what really nice modern uh, streets and uh, shops and commerce and stuff going on people are dressed well it's peaceful everybody's not all crammed up you know like overpopulated it's not overpopulated but they're not all crammed up they have a lot of sp they had a lot of space and it makes sense um here as we go here that what uh, that this individual was part of the Petroleum Institute. Ooh, the Petroleum Institute, right? Sounds very scientific. Uh, he's a technocrat. But look at this, British Petroleum, Royal Dutch Shell, and uh, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. So that's who this guy represents. Libya revolutionaries turn on each other as fears grow for law. And just to give you some somewhat proof i hope you go in there and check the videos out i mean they're all around the internet where you can see gaddafi driving to uh, libya but look at this libya before and after images to show you what a nato un humanitarian mission looks like so go in there and look at that look at look at that <laughs> that's nicer than most uh, uh cities in america and then look at that mm, looks like iraq looks like every other humanitarian mission they bomb and they kill and then of course comes the pillaging says here, um, yeah, revolutionaries turn on each other as fears grow for law and order. So it's because they don't have law and order. That's what it is. And no, it's because they went in there and they started up a hornet's nest and now you have a bunch of tribes and mercenaries and terrorists all fighting each other. And they're going to be fighting for what? Oil rights, right? And no, no, not anymore, guys. That's going straight to the corporations. That's going straight to the to the, to the the uh, royalty, right? The, the Royal Dutch Shell and British Petroleum. That's who it's going to, the queen and them. It's not going to the Libyan people, the uh, Gemma Haria, the, the masses anymore for social programs. If it does, I'd be very, very surprised. UN chief urges Libya to secure Gaddafi's weapons. Oh, yeah, the global government's telling them to secure the weapons that are coming in from Israel and the U.S. Fuck that. Are you kidding me? This is a business, and if you don't understand that, you need to go back to bed and go back to sleep and turn on a TV or something. But this is a business, and those weapons will not stop uh, flowing into that country. Clinton played pivotal role in Libya mission. So, again, congratulations, Hillary uh, Clinton for going in there and destroying another country and she takes full credit for it and she cheered on with a grin a creepy nefarious grin on her face when she heard that uh, uh, what happened to Gaddafi that he was basically assassinated 
It says here, um, UK military steps up plans for Iran attack amid fresh nuclear fears. British officials consider uh, contingency options to back up a possible U.S. action as fears mount over Tehran's capability, which is a bunch of bullshit. I've already said they're going to go in there and not going to find anything. Uh, they never have. It says Israel considers preemptive attack on Iran. So this is big news, very big news. Mr. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu trying to rally support in his cabinet for an attack on Iran, but uh, he doesn't have uh, uh, unilateral action so far. But I don't, I mean, just look at all the past in the U.S. Do they really need it? U.K., do you really need unilateral action? No, you say, we got to quit this bipartisan uh, bickering. We need to come together and we need to uh, keep, you know, protect uh, against terrorism and rogue nations that try to do harm on democratic countries. Oh, God, I want to puke. IDF test fires ballistic missile in central Israel. Defense Ministry says a trial was pre-planned, has no connection to recent media publications on possible attack on Iran. No, no connections whatsoever. Israel attack on Iran, military suicide. So go in there and check that out. More background on there. Link will be posted. Ex-soldier jailed for leaking Israeli assassination policy. So, yeah, you can go in there and check that out. Classified documents with journalists who use them to expose an alleged army policy to assassinate wanted Palestinian military militants in violation of court hearings. Saudi monarchy founder assured UK on Palestine. This is very, very interesting and big news. Document exposes a deep commit commitment of first uh, Saudi king to the United Kingdom and his assurance to British authorities to give Palestine to the Jews. And of course, that a lot of that World War II was to split up nations, to create a global government, to make people not want to ever have war again against nation against nation. Um, of course, all the sides were funded by the same bankers who came in there and, oh, we're going to give you loans. We're going to give you loans, right, to rebuild after we made shitloads of fucking money off all that blood and guts and death, right? All those guns. Like, it's all business, though. It's all business. It says here, U.S. troops in Kuwait threaten region. That's right. November 1st, there they go. Borden in Kuwait. They're, something's brewing, guys. Remember what I said about Central Asia? That could be the battleground for World War Three and nukes and all that and stuff. The last uh, hurrah. Why the Colombian model, even if it means drug wars and armed rebellion, is the best chance for U.S. success in Central Asia. Syria accepts Arab League peace plan after Cairo talks. Syrians rally in support of Assad again. Lebanon nabs armed smugglers to Syria, arrested two Syrian men involved in smuggling weapons to the neighboring country. Goes in here and says that the smugglers uh, were members of a ring that receives money from Syrian opposition groups based in an Arab country. Hmm, isn't that nice? And then they go in there and they, what, Hamas kill, or Hama kill uh, 15 Syrian troops. But you're not going to see that in the Western media. Pakistan to forfeit final IMF load trash after rejecting strict reform demands. So see, that's what I'm talking about. Kenya, we will destroy weapons flown into Somalia. No, you're not. It says here, because it's a business, U.S. drone strike kills eight in Somalia. And I love Kenya because their own people are fucking starving and they're bombing and invading Somalia. U.S. who are starving. U.S. drone strike kills eight in Somalia. Kills, uh, U.S. drone strike kills 20 more Somalis. Then U.S. drone strike kills 38 in Somalia. So there you go. Cholera hunger kills even 30 more in Somalia. Sorry to report on that, but that's just how it is. Al-Qaeda or Al-CIA to target Somalia drought victims with cash handouts. So, And this article smells like a propaganda piece because Al-Qaeda is linked with government provocateurs, and I don't think Al-Shabaab is. It says here, oil-rich dictator of Kazakhstan recruits Tony Blair to help with Nobel Peace Prize. That's right. How's he going to do that? Tony Blair lands a major deal in Kazakhstan over Mattel, a uh, billionaire uh, steel company. And, of course, what they're talking about nationalizing and privatizing. Suicide bomb rocks Kazakhstan's oil town. Then Kyrgyzstan tells U.S. to close Mana Base. This is what he campaigned on, but I don't know if this guy actually represents the Kyrgyzstans because he actually they, they uh, said it was voter fraud. China-U.S. energy geopolitics, the battle for the oil in the South China Sea. Remember, this is what it's all about. South Korea uh, Army helicopter crashes, kills one in an exercise. Alaska soldier held on suspicious, so an American. Georgia man charged with plotting to to make Racine, whatever. Another American, ooh, terrorist, alleged plot to attack U.S. officials was inspired by online anti-government novel. Ooh, malicious chief's portrait emerges of a man who despised authority. Undercover agent played a role. Of course they did. They always do. Or they just hire patsies like Timothy McVeigh. The New World Order, I mean, Hugo Chavez's family wants him to give up his presidency. I told you they're coming.
Forum and Harrison Bundell tossed Forbes as most powerful as approval rating hits another record low. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.